Hi, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Oh, very good. That's all working. Jolly good. Yeah, start in a, in a bit then, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. I'm still trying to put some things in order. I've been busy since the last Okay. So maybe in six minute time, in case there is no worry about jumping, so I think we'll just start. Okay, very good. Yep, yeah. speak a bit. Bye.
Okay, I think Tim, we can start if like nobody else is joining. Let me. Are you still with me? Yep, I'm still here. Okay, okay, let me. Let's share my full screen. Okay. Uh, so for today, I think uh, we'll be sticking uh, uh, with what we have in the notes. I think I'll stick with what we have in the notes. Uh, so before I proceed, let me put in the chat box, let me start the meeting so that once John is editing, uh, the video, it will be clear. Okay, so for the benefits uh, for those uh, that will be following along uh, uh, in YouTube, so this is the Alpha Data Science Online Learning Community, and we are going through the Alpha Data Science book, and today we'll be discussing about chapter 27 of the book, uh, which is about iteration. Uh, and this will be like a continuation of our last week discussion where we'll be look at uh, how we can use functions uh, to, to make uh, tasks. So this is just like a continuation of what we discussed. So today we'll be looking at iteration, how we can speed up uh, our analysis workflow, how we can use, uh, we'll be looking at uh, different functions uh, that are coming from the core package. So be looking at uh, some map family of functions and also how we can really apply it to solve a uh, real world problem. So, uh, so that is just uh, basically what we have, uh, uh, the, the, the prerequisites, we need to have a uh, tidyverse and we need to initialize it with the library, uh, tidyverse, then they, they did some uh, explanation here with some data frame, which is a table where A uh, with the say random, numbers, the sample random, 10 random numbers, which will have a mean of zero, standard deviation of one. So we have B, we have C, and we have D. So in this case, uh, they were looking at a workflow whereby I have the data frame, and then they pipe it into a summarized uh, function. So they have N, which is going to be the count. So they have A, which is be the median of all the A. We have B, we have C, and we have D. So uh, before I proceed, Tim, can you point out what is wrong with this uh, line of code? Oh, gosh. Um, what a mistake, or just the fact, basically, it's repeating lots of things within it. Yes. Basically, this code, uh, because normally, uh, uh, from what we learned from last week, uh, if you will repeat ourselves more than two times uh, uh, in a we need to think about uh, how we can write a function. So basically this same line of code can be written just with just a single line where they have DF and then they use summarize across. So they just say within across, uh, they specify uh, all those columns. Then they just say the function they want to apply uh, to those, uh, to those just as they did here, where they have DF and then summarize across they say summarize here is going to give us the counts then across column a to d the function in which we want to apply is just say give me uh, the median so we can see that this workflow uh, they do recommend that we should not use do like this or rather uh, we should do uh, our workflow should be in this way whereby we just say df, we pipe it into a summarize, which is a function. And within summarize, we are getting the count. Then we said across uh, column A to D. So what do we what function do we want to apply to those column? Those four column, uh, we want we want the median. So once we run that, uh, we are going to get this. So it shows the count is 10. It shows this is a median for A, this is a median for B, this is a median uh, for C, and also. Uh, this is a median for D. And, and, and this across a family of function, it, it plays uh, very well with the tidy select function, where we, whereby we can, we can specify that the column in which we want to select 
It should start with a certain character. It should end uh, with a certain character. Uh, if we still, we can still use our tidy select function, maybe because we can have several columns and we need, we, we can be typing uh, all those columns at once. So we can just use uh, the tidy select function, say, okay, look across all these columns, select uh, this column, then we now apply a certain function to those columns to transform to transform the data. Uh, I think that is what they were trying to explain here. We can use start width, we can use end width, we can also pass in a regular uh, expression. So that is what uh, the discourse here. This example is still sim similar to what we have, uh, where we have another table, uh, which is a data frame. So here we have table, and then they are grouping by uh, all these groups. So they group it by this, and then they summarize across. So now in this summarize across, they say they want to summarize across all the columns. So they say everything means that we want to summarize across all the columns. Then, then they now specify that the function they apply applying to all those columns uh, should be uh, median. So I don't know if there are any questions before I proceed uh, to the next part. No, that's good. So, okay, thank you. Okay, so what do we have next? Calling single functions. Okay, so let's look at how we can call single functions. So in this case, uh, they have DF and they are grouping by all the group and then they summarize across everything. Then the dot function, so we can see that we are getting an error here because we can't say, we can pass this function into another uh, function. We can see that error in summarize. In arguments across everything, uh, median. Caused by error, median dot default. Arguments X is missing with no defaults because uh, we cannot call the median function in this way, but rather uh, we can do it this way, just as we see uh, in this example, we can see that median, we just pass in the median rather than we using opening and closing brackets. So it will give us an error. It's going to result into error. So we need to be uh, sure. And they say that this error arises because you are calling the function with no inputs. Because if you are calling a function, you need to pass in inputs. We need to pass in some inputs. Because just as we discussed in last week, the function is broken down into three parts. We have the name of the function. We have the arguments of the function, and also we have uh, the body of the function. So the argument of the function are those inputs in which we need to feed into those function for the function to give us the return, uh, for the function to give us uh, a return output. So sorry for the background noise. Uh, I am in the lab, and so we are still working. So, so that is why we are getting some background noise. So. So how do we call uh, multiple, uh, calling multiple functions? So uh, in this case, we have a function and this function is taking uh, several arguments. You can see we, we are having n, we are having n checking for missing data. We are checking for the mean, should always be zero. Uh, standard deviation should always be one. Then we are getting a, the body of the function. We say it should be sample, uh, which will be R norm where we have n minus n underscore all the missing data. So we have also have the mean, which is will be the mean. We also have standard deviation. Then, then how, how are we going to call uh, this function? So here, uh, df miss. So we need, to use, uh, we need to use this data frame to test, uh, to see if this function is going to give us uh, our return uh, value. So we have, uh, DF miss, and then we are summarizing across column A to D. Then which function we ask, the function we want to pass into those uh, columns, we say we, we want to get uh, the median. And here, we want to get uh, the count, so which will be give us uh, the count. We can see that A, we are getting NA, uh, B, we are getting NA, C, we are getting NA, D, we are getting the value, return values, and n we are getting five. So why are we getting that? Because normally, uh, 
normally if we pass in a function to a DF in which we have missing data, it's still going to give us NA. So we need to, in order for us to uh, resolve that problem, we need to pass in that uh, NA dot RM uh, equals to true. We need to specify that if there are any missing data, drop uh, that missing data and uh, and carry out uh, the computation. So we need to tell R that, okay, when you are doing this, okay, I want you to compute the median, but I, I don't want you to use uh, the missing data. So you can just drop the missing data. And so we have DF miss, and then we say summarize across, across those four columns, then the function. Here, yeah, we are passing in an anonymous function, which is a function uh, that does not have a name. So we say function of X. So what do we pass in there? We say median of X. Then we say na.rm equals true. Then we, yeah, 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 will give us the counts. So if you can see that, we have been able to uh, overcome that issue. So I will now return uh, the results in which we are expecting because we can also do the anonymous function in this, this way where we say forward slash, uh, forward slash, uh, we, we specify X, this is still the anonymous function, it's a function uh, that does not have a name, it's just like a shortcut. Uh, but for me, how me I used to write my own anonymous function, uh, I prefer to use uh, the tilde, I prefer to use uh, the tilde when I want to specify, uh, but you can also write it in this way, this is also an, an anonymous function which is a function we just define in a fly. We do not specify any name. We do not assign that function to any object. And R is going to carry out uh, those uh, computations. So it's just uh, return the result. I don't know, Tim, is there any questions before I proceed? Based on uh, the just, most... just quickly, towards the top of that, where you generated the data frame, that table DF. Okay. Uh, yeah, there. So it looks like you're using R norm NA, which is a function lots of times. Could, could that be done with function across as well or not? No, because the R norm NA is a function in which we have defined here. This is a function definition. It's a function in which we have created already. R norm NA, which is a function. And this function is taking one, two, three, four arguments. Oh, this okay. function, yeah, yeah. Sorry, it's passing values in, isn't yes. it? Yes. Not so kind of, that is where yeah. we now use we now use that function to create this yeah this df mix. So we yeah, now test sense. we now test the, uh, to see how the function uh, does. So which year we are actually testing uh, the function. So if you check here also, uh, we are also testing the function with an anonymous. But in here we are specifying that we are passing in an anonymous function which is a function of X, then we say median of X, then we say NA dot RM equals uh, true. Then this one is the count, which is going to check for every count uh, in our data frame. And this is still the same syntax, just as above, it's still an anonymous uh, function. Okay, I don't know if I've been able to answer your question. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Thank you very much. Okay, so, so, Okay, yeah, it's still the anonymous function. This is still anonymous function where we have forward slash X, uh, but yeah, we are specifying the median and also we want to get all the sum of the missing data that we can find in DF miss. Uh, okay, so here they were talking about, uh, it's also very good because I found this syntax uh, very useful. Maybe I want to do a, lo a lot of summary statistics across a bunch of columns, but I want to know uh, within those columns, I want to specify, I want to get the mean, I want to get the median, the variance, standard deviation, but I want to know which of we, I want to be able to tie this to act to the actual output. So in the deploy, there is a function called dot names. So within this dot names, we, we are going to use this colleague, uh, colleague, which will be dot function underscore dot call. So which is going to be, if the function is median, it's going to be median, then this is going to capture the column name for, so that it will be very easy once you are going through 
uh, the outputs in which R is going to return. So we can tie this, uh, tie this function to the actual column name that is coming from the data frame in which we are passing it. So we are going to say, okay, let's say we have, let's lose the, uh, the iris, the iris data set. So let me, let me copy this. Okay, so that we see how this actually works. Then I will do some editing. I will do some editing. Paste this here. Library. Diverse. Okay. So here, I will replace this to Iris. Okay. So I'll say summarize across, across column one to column four. Okay. So let's see, this is what I want to do. So when I run this, okay, you can see we have median of sepal length, number of missing of sepal length, which is zero. We have median of sepal width, which is three. Number of missing in sepal width is, I found it uh, should be uh, very useful. Maybe, maybe when we are going through, when we are going through the actual, uh, result we can see uh okay this is where we are this is where we are going to and i found it uh, to be very very useful okay so i don't know if there are any comments on this no that, that, that's all very good thank you all your family okay so let me see ah let's see okay i think we are almost through uh what is this one doing okay this one we can use this syntax to replace missing data maybe when we have some missing data okay we can say qualess x so when we have missing data we want to replace it uh with zero we just replace all those called cell that we have missing data we can replace it with zero here we have our df miss which is our missing data data frame then we say we want to mutate across all the column, and this is a function we are applying. Then we now say we are using an anonymous function. That is why we say forward slash, open and closing parenthesis x. Then the function is now qualess. We said x, so this is the x we feed in. So when we have n, so we are replacing the, that actual n uh, with zero. So we can do it in this way. Okay, so what again, what again? Yeah, yeah they were talking about DF means mutate across, then uh, the function, uh, which will be absolute value of X. Then this one, we are trying to see how, just as I explained, to retain the column to column name so that it will not be C absolute, B absolute, because we say dot call and underscore absolute. So, which is absolute is a function call, is going to select the column, can be either column A to column B, then underscore absolute, which is the absolute uh, function. Okay, it's like, Tim, you have a comment? Uh, no, no, I think, yeah, those, those are all pretty straightforward, I think. Yeah, happy with that, thank you. Uh, filtering. Okay, filtering, so for filtering, for filtering, uh, we have uh, DF miss, and then we can filter if underscore any from A to D is dot N A. So we want to filter, uh, we want to filter out all those missing data. We can use either the is dot N A function uh, or if underscore all function. These are all function uh, that are coming from the, from the deep line uh, package and you know the tidyverse uh, syntax. Uh, they have functions uh, and they have a very good uh, documentations. Yeah, they have a very good documentation. So, in which uh, we want to use a specific function. Uh, you see, uh, this function is not clear. You can go into the documentation, and you can easily go through it, and you understand uh, what the function is doing. So this is still the same syntax, how to use, uh, the, how to use uh, the apply family of uh, function, how to use the apply family of function. So in this, in this example, 
in this example, they have a DF, which is expand dates, which has a function. And this function was taking one argument, which is DF. Then they now say the DF, they now mutate across where is dot dates. So where we have dates, where we have dates, we say lists, year is equals to year, months is equals to months, and we have day is equals to month day. So which is a function we are using, we create this function to expand dates, okay? So we, but we will need to test to see how this function works in real life. So here we have DF dates, which is a table. We have name. These are, we have two names. We have dates, which is year, month, day from Ruby dates. We have this date, we have this date, and we have DF dates, and then we test the function expand dates. We want to see uh, if the function is going to be able to expand out those dates. We can say we have name, we have dates, uh, we have dates here, which is 2009. We have date months, okay? And we have date day, which is three day, which is 16 day. I think it's a very nice function. It's a very nice function uh, uh, because uh, if you really understand the, how to do iteration, uh, it's going to speed up your workflow. Uh, it's going to speed up your programming uh, workflow because uh, when I first started learning at times, maybe I have a bunch of model I want to create. You will see me, I'll be writing in my script, model one, model two, model three, up to model, maybe model 50. And all this workflow uh, is it's, it's pain, very painful because within that workflow, you will make a bunch of errors, which you need to be stepping through the code from one line to another to correct error. But if you are using function, it's very easy for you to detect error and you concentrate your eye in one place. And this is going to improve your, uh, your efficiency, at which I agree. So there is still the same thing, uh, but they were applying an anonymous uh, function, which is a function uh, that does not have a name. And here they were testing the function where they are used summarize underscore mean, which is a function and which they have defined here, which is going to summarize everything based on the group. Uh, but one, one drawback to this function in which they did here is that can you point out one drawback in which you can see in this function? Well, in the summarize means function. Yes, I think there is the summarize underscore mean function. There's for courts to add dot group is equals to drop. They need to drop the grouping because uh -huh. it's always good practice once we are grouping by certain value, we are doing a bunch of summary statistics. It's always nice we should drop our grouping. Yeah, good. Okay. Five three, five or longer. Oh, I think I will skip this for now. Okay, let's see this. Yeah, we have DF, we have five or longer column A to D, and then we are grouping by the name, okay? Because by for longer, A to D, what is going to do is going to create two columns. One column for all the names, one column for all the value. So we are now grouping by the column that is holding the name. Then we summarize median is supposed to median of the value, mean is supposed to mean of the value. So when we now check long, you can see that we are getting the, uh, the return value, then we can use names glue. So this one, we are using the glue function, name underscore dot values to attach the, the name to the value. We want to attach uh, the name to the value so that we can easily trace uh, where this output is coming from. Uh, what is this doing? Uh, this is a DF, they created here, okay? So they have DF dead. They said five or longer, and uh, within five or longer, they said it should be everything. Then they said names to should be group and dot value. And name set, we are separating the name. We are separating the name uh, with underscore. So when we check DF uh, long, we can see the result there. 
Uh, here we are doing some bunch of summary, summary statistics uh, to reduce uh, the data set down. We are doing some bunch of summary statistics. So uh, what is this doing? Function DF group by DF group by peak. I think we have seen how we can use peak to select group of columns uh, in our last uh, discussion and uh, last week, I think. So I think I will skip that because so okay now in this in this scenario we have a bunch of files. Maybe we have a bunch of files in a specific CSV Excel file in a specific folder. Okay. We want to read all these files in a more efficient way. We want to import it into our so here we have a data of 2019. We have data of 2020, 2021, and 2022. Okay. So these are all uh the the five parts, okay? These are all the five parts, okay? We have specified that. So we can say data, we can say bind rows. We are binding all the rows, you know, it's going to bind data 2019, it's going to place data 2020 on that. It's just going to bind those columns in. But a more efficient way is for me to use the list.file, specify all the files in which I have in that directory, okay? So once I have those files, I can use for map. I can use for map to read all those files uh, in that directory, but it's going to read all those XLS files as a, as a list. So it's going to import all those files in as a list, uh, which is uh, we can now start checking for the specific uh, ones in which we want. Just like here, we have list.file. We specify the parts where we want to get those files from. Then the pattern, we say that all the file we are interested in is all the file that have, that ends with XLSX. So we want to retrieve all those files. But here, we want to retain all the full names of those files. So that is why I say full.names equals to true. So when I check the parts, Okay, these are all the data we can find in those parts. Okay, so we need to read this data in. So when I first started learning, I think I'll be doing like this, that I want to import the one of 1952. I've imported it. I will now go to 1957. I do the same thing. And up till 2007, I import the same thing. So, the more efficient way is for when we have all the list of those files in, which will be files. Okay, so this this is going to be this is going to be the file. So we want to we index the third one, which is going to be uh, which is going to be this. Okay. So we just index square brackets. We just want to get an items out of a list because that file is a list. So it shows us that it is this. Uh, but to me, the more efficient way to bring in this uh, data in is to use the for uh, map uh, function, or we can use list row bind uh, function. So we have list. This is uh, the function. Okay. So we have map. So map, we pass in the parts. We need to define the parts because we have defined the parts already. So the function we want to apply uh, is the read underscore Excel. So when we say length of files, we can see that we have uh, 12 files. So are there any questions, any comments? No, no, that's okay, thank you. So when we check the length, we see that we have uh, 12 uh, files there. Uh, so here we can say list row bind of files. So we can see that this is the data we have there. Uh, here we have parts which contains the list of all the five parts. So, and then we use the map family of function from four. And the function we want to use is this function. And then we say list row binds, which is going to bind all this list the first data will be on top. This next data will follow in that order. So it's just going to arrange those 
uh, that are in that order. So here yeah, they were trying to do what? Uh, they're, passing, they're passing an anonymous uh, function, which is a function that does not have a name. Uh, we only define the function in the flag. Okay. So when we have uh, some data that are in parts, so we can use the set names function. We pass in the best name. So this is the part. So when we check uh, the part, it's going to, so that we can retrieve those names. So we have parts and then set names. Then we pass in the best name and then we use our map function. Then this is the function we want to apply to map and it's going to read all these data in as a list. And we assign all those data into a name called file. So when we check file, we can see that file uh, contain lists of all the data sets in which we can find in the parts. Uh, what are they doing here? Here they are just defining the list of all the files. They are storing in this object called files. And here they are doing subsets that they want the data for 1962. They want to retrieve this XLS file, okay? Which is going to give us uh, this. What are they doing here? So here they are just mutating a pass number here for all, and they say it should be all the year. Uh, uh. Okay, separate wider limb. I think it's a function in which we have seen, uh, we have discussed about this function before uh, when we were looking at uh, the transform. Yes, when we we're looking at a transformation chapter. So we are using list row bind. Uh, within the list row bind, we say names to, uh, the names to go to here. And then we say separate wider delim here. Delim, the delimiter is all where we have forward slash, the names should be NA, uh, DIR, and file. And then we have separate wider delim. We have file, we have delim, should be period, and names to be this. So once we have that, uh, it's going to separate uh, those columns. Uh, based on based on the arguments in which we fit in, and it's going to return uh, uh, the DF. But, okay, I think the last part or uh, the last part is talk about uh, after we have done all the pre-processing. How do we save? How do we save our outputs? So here we have parts, and then we say set names should be base name, and then the function. And then the function, the function should be this, which will read it, those data, then we say list row by names to year, and then we say mutate year, pass number, we pass in the year. So we now say write those, write on that for CSV. The file we want to write is gapminder. We want to save it as gapminder.csv. Then it will now save uh, that data set as a CSV file. Uh, in the in the directory in which uh, we are working on, I think this one is clear. We can either use write underscore CSV or write for CSV to save it as a CSV file. Okay, so here they are talking about many simple iterations uh, in which we can use to improve our workflow. Yes, we we have process file, which is a function that has parts, takes one argument. Uh, we have df read underscore csv that is in the part. Then we have df filter where all the missing data that we can find in the ID. And then we mutate ID to lower ID. Then we have some pivot function. Then we have parts. We want to apply this function, which is a map. And this map, which function do we want to pass into map? We have already defined our function here, which is uh, process file. So when we pass in that function, process file means that process this file, apply all these arguments to those files, and then we now say list row bind. So which and 
is going to bind all those files row by row uh, under each. So what are they doing here? Okay, here they were trying to see how they do some anonymous functions where they have parts, they still use map. And uh, before I proceed, I want to clarify something. Uh, there are various map variants. So when we are using map, we always know that the return uh, value in which we are going to get is always going to be a list. It's going to give us a list. We, within those map, map takes two arguments. The first argument is always going to be a vector or a list. Then the next argument is going to be a function in which you want to apply to each element of those vector or list. And it's always going to return a list. So we always know the return value at the end. So here, yeah, they were using some anonymous function. So these are some anonymous function they are using to process the data. Then they use the list uh, row binders as we have seen uh, above. Okay, so here yeah, is talking about uh, heterogeneous data. So we have parts, we use map. So this is reading in the data. So here yeah, we are defining some function, which is DF, DF types. So when we have DF types, so the function we pass in our data frame, which is gapminder. So it's just goes to check for call name of names of DF. So it's just going to apply uh, this function to our gapminder data sets, and it's going to give us uh, the return the return value. I think this is still the same thing, but they want to select all the column except the column that has a missing data, and then the pivot wider, which is going to convert it from a long format into a wide format. Then the names is coming from call name, the values is coming from call type. So, uh, but uh, but when working when working with Paul, uh, there is a chances in which uh, we are going to get failures. There is a ninety nine percent chance because it happened to me. I think I will write. I think I will get, have to be going through each line to check, okay, we have I made an error, so there are possibility. But in order for us to overcome that, there are some, there are some uh, helper function, which is like the possibly and safely. We can wrap our function within possibly and safely. This is going to make sure that the function is always going to run. Even though there is error, it's going to run, but we can easily debug our code to say, oh, I made an error here so we can step back and correct. So we can save five parts, files where we have parts, we have map possibly parts, which is anonymous function. And the function is the function we are applying. If this is the inputs, then we have null. So when we have data, we pass in files and then list row by. So we can use uh, the possibly, there is possibly, uh, there is safely in which we can use uh, to, to overcome failures when we're working with a uh, uh, bunch of functions. So maybe uh, this talk about uh, how do we save multiple outputs? Uh, there are, uh, I will not be talking much about the DocDB because we have seen the how to use uh, DocDB in our previous example when we are looking at database and also I look at data, I think we have covered uh, the DocDB. So I'll just go straight uh, to saving multiple outputs. So here we have this XLS file that is in parts. We want the first one. This is the template, template of here. Uh, we assign a new name, which will be 19, 1952. Uh, here they are connecting it to a database and they are saving the outputs on a database where we have connect and then table. Gapminder, which shows that uh, within that database, uh, we have the Gapminder data set has been appended uh, to the database. So here we are, is a function. They are defining a function. Uh, they are passing in the parts. Uh, this is a, uh, they want to read in this XLS file. Uh, this, they want to grab this pass number on the base name. Uh, the, this, they want to append the Gapminder to this object, this uh, database connection, 
they want to put it as a beard. So, but we can also have uh, the parts, which is a list parts of that might contain list of several objects. Then we pipe it to a map. Then we append all those files. Uh, I think the most efficient way is to either use the work uh, function. They have the work function. The work function is a function in which we use. We use the work function uh, not for its return value, but rather for its side effects. For you, we to get uh, the side effect, uh, maybe saving a bunch of CSV file, saving multiple plots. I always prefer to use the work family of function. And the work family of function, it takes one input, which can be a list of a list of plots in which I want to save. Then the next is going to be the function I want to apply to those inputs. So I want to say, oh, save this object for me. Then it's going to save uh, those uh, objects. We can also write a bunch of file that way. Here we have diamond. We are using the group nest clarity, which is going to create a column for all the clarity. And it's going to print, create a column for data, which is a, and this column of data is a, a contain list of several data frames. So we can check by clarity dollar sign data. We can check the first. You can see that uh, it's actually it's a data frame. So we have by clarity and then mutate parts str group diamond. Diamondclarity.csv. We can see that uh, this is these are all bunch. These are all bunch of CSV file. So how do we save this file in? We can say write underscore CSV. Uh, though this is not the most efficient way of doing this, uh, there are several where we we'll still see that we specify this part because we can't be doing we can't be repeating ourselves in this way. We can also use uh, work two. And in work two, we pass it, we are passing in two inputs. Two inputs need to go in. Then uh, this is a function we are passing in to the work, which is write underscore CSV. Uh, saving plots. Uh, we can also do this in the same way. We can also use a functional programming uh, when we want to save a bunch of plots. So this is a plot, uh, which is a map, data, current histogram. We have parts, str glue. Uh, we want it to be a PNG file. Then we assign this to this object. So we use work two. And just as I say, work two, we need to pass in two arguments. So here, the first argument specifies the file parts. Uh, the second argument is the, is the plot in which you want to save. Uh, the next is the function, in this case, uh, they use an anonymous function. Well, that is why they are using forward slash. Uh, and that function they want to use is ggc. So this is going to save this in the parts, plot, the width, and also the height uh, was also specified in that function. Okay, so I think uh, that, is, uh, that is all. So I think to learn more, uh, to learn more about uh, how to do iteration, they recommend that we should use, we should consult the advanced R uh, functionals in the advanced R books. So I, I don't know if uh, there are any burning questions. Uh, no, that's all very good. Thank you, Olio Femi. Okay, so I think I will stop. I will put stop in the chat. I think. Uh,